All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, those of you guys that aren't new here, you're gonna already know most of this stuff. Uh, this is gonna be a breakdown for anybody that might actually not know enough about these guys, these giant bluegills. Uh, this is my addiction. It's DWS Outdoors Big Blue Addict, Big Bluegill Addiction. Uh, I got some winter merch on right now. This is the ice fishing merch. That's my Big Bluegill merch. That's always going to be linked in the description below. If you guys want to help support the channel, uh, get more of these videos spread out there just so we can get a... Let's try to inform more people. And I'm going to tell you right now, up front, this is one, going to upset some people. Two, it's going to be a no-brainer for some people. Some of you guys already know this stuff, so it's just going to be like a re-up thing. And I'm sure some of this stuff nobody's ever heard before because there's not a lot of people that openly talk about this. They're worried about people hating on them and stuff like that. I don't really care. These guys, these guys are really hard to find. Do you know why they're really hard to find? Because of all the stuff I'm about to talk to you in this video for. Um, and those of you guys that want to throw a hissy fit, I'm going to put the claws out here right now. There are scientific and many, 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 many studies listed all over Google. So if you want to Google them and do all that, I'm, I'm not doing the legwork for you. I'm trying to help you guys out right now by telling you. You can either trust me because, one, I know a lot about these guys, or two, you can do your own legwork, which I encourage everybody to do all times. Do your legwork and you can backtrack all of the, the facts. And if you guys find stuff, I'm okay with being wrong. If you find stuff that can be corroborated through many sources, not just one, not just your favorite source, um, I will re-up re whatever, and maybe I'll make a new video and update some stuff that I, don't, I didn't know before. I'm always down to learn. That's the biggest thing about today's video. Hopefully you guys are too, so let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started here. I'm gonna keep this simple. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to take. If you don't want to sit down and listen to somebody talk for whatever amount of time about, you know, the facts of big bluegills and what needs to be done to one, grow your own big bluegills Two, make sure that you maintain a big bluegill, big bluegill body of water. Uh, and three, try to figure out how to like, by learning all this stuff, you'll actually be able to catch more and bigger bluegills in like default because it's going to kind of teach you everything you need to know about where they're at what they're doing and how they got there and like you know things that basically correspond to all the stuff you need to know about big bluegills um but the biggest thing here is we're going to talk about all the touchy subjects because i wanted to do one really good deed this year for those guys i those those you guys that aren't new here you know i'm a big bluegill nut um that's why i have my merch line big bluegill addiction um they've been an addiction for many 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 years way before i ever started filming youtube stuff um and i i've been learning my whole life to be better at taking care of them uh, you know, not destroying them and all that such and whatnot, but we're going to get to, get to some points and I want you guys to comment below what you think about each point. And then I want to hear your side of things, you know, like what you've experienced, uh, things that you might have heard or maybe you have not heard. I want to know what you guys know. So like when I'm talking about stuff, I'm not just, you know, re saying the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, so since it's the ice fishing season, we'll start, uh, well, we can't really start with that. We have to start with the beginning of what creates a big bluegill in the first place. And now the thing is, is I'm just going to pretend all you guys agree with me. If you disagree, comment below. Explain why you d disagree. I, I need to hear your explanation. Don't just shout out some stupid obscenities like that's just going to get your stuff deleted anyways and that's just stupid conversation is what i want here um so the biggest thing that we've discovered not me scientists have discovered and biologists and all the people that do the you know studies day in day out year in year out for probably the last 15 to 20 years is the biggest male bluegill dictates the whole size structure and population density of bluegills so to, to keep it really simple if you take uh say i have a bunch of bluegills 
and the average size is nine inches. So that's average. So some people, they have places where they can catch 11, 12 inch plus bluegills. Those are insanely large. You're very lucky. Those are incredibly large. Uh, now these are, I'm gonna go into detail why it's different. I live in the state of Wisconsin uh, and I fish mostly north of the state of Wisconsin and stuff like that. Uh, so we're gonna have different things here versus like down in Texas or in Florida and stuff like that. But I do know a pretty good amount of information about all that stuff. So I'm gonna go into details for that. But the biggest thing still stands. The biggest bluegill dictates all that stuff. So if you take and say your average bluegill is nine inches, the biggest ones you've ever caught in that body of water, say like you got one or two of them, uh, were we'll say 11 to 12 inches. Those are gigantic um, in my neck of the woods. Uh, and uh, the smallest average size is like six inches, right? So you have six on this end, you have, we'll just say 11 on this end, and nine is like the the one you catch the most of, which is awesome, because those are great. Uh, eight to nine inch bluegill is a great eater. And you know if you have hundreds of thousands of those, or hundreds of thousands, uh, that's the best thing in the world. So you take and instead of keeping those nines, you toss all those back because you only you're only interested in eating uh, a 10 inch plus bluegill because you know you can catch them, uh, you know they're around. So that's your whole goal. The whole t the whole time is if it's like nine and a half, nine and three quarters, 10 inches, that's all you want to keep. Now, that's fine. It's it's there's no size limits pretty much anywhere that I've found in the the United States that dictates that you cannot keep a large bluegill. Um even though it's been proven over and over and over and over again that the biggest bluegill dictates all this stuff. Needless to say, uh say you do that and a couple dozen other people do that with you. Say you're fishing beds or something like that. Um and you wipe those out. What you're doing is you're giving the next one in line the opportunity to rule the colony. Um, and scientifically speaking, it's basically like taking the biggest buck genetics or the biggest anything genetics out of the, the thing. Uh, they dictate everything that happens around them. So when you go in and you take the biggest thing, the next one in line steps up. They don't get bigger because they don't need to, if that makes sense. So like if I'm a 10 inch bluegill and I rule the roost, and everybody has to try to get to 10 inches in order to have a chance at ruling everything around them. If everything has to get that big, my genetics and all my stuff that I'm doing with my life is to try to get that big. If I disappear, if these ones disappear, why do I why would I waste energy growing that big when I can get to nine inches and now I'm the biggest one around and the eight inches are trying to get to my size, not any bigger, if that makes any sense. That's as simple as I can make that. So one thing I do have, uh, I have to get across to everybody is sometimes people don't understand, uh, lo like location means everything. So Anything that lives within the ice belt, and I'm not 100% positive on like where the line goes across the United States, um, but anything where the water gets down to like 32 degrees, like 32 or frozen, like ice, um, even 32 degrees is, I mean, anything down in that 40 degree range, fish don't spawn at that, that uh, range. So what happens with everything north of the ice belt if you guys down south don't know this, uh, I just talked to one of you guys, just so you guys, just so you know, whoever, I can't remember your name, but whoever you are, you just made me realize, like, this is why it's so different. Um, anything south of the ice belt has an extended growing season, but that is actually a detriment to, uh, like, a fish's age. They grow faster, bigger, and longer, but they live less, like, less is long, like, you know, say a bluegill in northern Minnesota lives to 11 years old, you're never going to probably find an 11-year-old bluegill in, like, South Texas. She's probably not. Um, I'm not saying there isn't, and I'm not 100% factually sure on what their top range is. I just know they, like, boom and bust type thing, and that's why uh, people down south uh, have, like, a different outlook on giant bluegills and stuff like that. Um, but... And body dynamics and all that stuff change. 
now up by us. So I live in Wisconsin, once again. Um, anything in the ice belt north, bluegills tend to grow extremely slow. Talking like three quarter of an inch to half an inch, maybe a year. Um, so if it's growing, or, or even less than that, like maybe an, I don't know. I, I think some of them have grown like as slow as like an eighth a year or something like that. So when I catch a 10 inch bluegill and I'm losing my mind, it's because it takes 10 years for that fish to get that big. What? Just imagine what you were doing 10 years ago and then think, okay, so a fish was born and then think of now that fish just hit 10 inches. So 10 years to grow a 10 inch bluegill is a good standard to live by. Some of them grow faster. There's many different reasons for that. Um, but some of them, most of them grow slower. And a big thing, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about with this guy, because that's why I made a poster of him, are body dynamics. So from bottom to top, when they're shaped that way, that's because for the most part, all of their energy, when the big bluegills rule the roost, um, like I said, say those 10 inch bluegills are around, they tell the younger bluegills genetically and through nature they have to get that big well so a 10 inch bluegill up against a 10 inch bluegill there's the same thing right two 10 inch bluegills who do you think's gonna win the 10 inch bluegill that weighs half a pound or the 10 inch bluegill that weighs a pound so that's and that's what i'm trying to get across for uh, any of these northern, all you northern states that, you know, especially ones that don't have like limits and stuff like that. If you ever come across a body of water where you're like, man, all I can catch, like for the biggest bluegill is an eight inch bluegill. That's because all the monsters have been destroyed to the point where there might be a couple of them floating around, but one, one bluegill isn't going to dictate the, the, the size structure of all of them. You need colonies of 10 inch bluegills to create colonies of nine inch bluegills trying to get to 10, if that makes sense. So like hundreds of thousands of 10 inch bluegills in a big body of water will create a body of water that keeps churning over big bluegills after season after season. Um, but if you destroy those big ones, then they don't want to grow that big and then you end up with stunted bluegills. And it's a cascading effect. Uh, like I said, you guys can look this all up. The cascading effect is as, as simple as this. Say two seasons in a row, everybody and their mother knows where the, the bluegills are spawning. Like it's not a secret, you know, one phone call and half the country knows where they're at, uh, or one post online and half the country knows where the, the spawning beds are at. And everybody goes in there and wipes them out every day for two seasons. Now, granted, there's giant bodies of water and there's river systems and stuff like that that, you know, they can kind of get away with, like, moving their bed systems around. But most of the time, they try to go back to the same area. So two years in a row, you wipe those completely out. Well, the third year, everybody goes back and they go, well, we used to get 10-inch bluegills out here by the buckets. That's where they went. <laughs> it's that simple. It's really, really that simple. Um... And, you know, when you come back and you're like, well, the biggest one I've caught today was a nine. The rest are eights. Okay, so now you keep all of the nines and most of the bigger eights, like eight and a half, whatever. So then you go back two years, three years later after that, and you go, well, this, this lake's fished out. Uh, I'll have to let it rebound. And, you know, all I get here now are six-inch stunted bluegills. You, you got to understand something. When you get down to the stunted size of bluegill, they're never coming back. The only way they would come back is if there was a die off of some kind, uh, which that happens. And that's a whole nother story that I can get into. If you guys want to hear about how you can find big bluegills quicker every winter, comment below. I'll read through the comments. Uh, I want to, like I said, hear everything, everything, or everybody's got to say, but yeah, I'll do a separate video on that. But long story short with that one is basically once they're gone they're gone and you're only you know you're, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot for that and the sad thing is is like i have the ability to travel and go find new bodies of water all over the country all over my states around me and i get to find the bodies of water where these giant bluegills live 
and I can go to them and catch them. But most people aren't driving two hours to go catch some bluegills. You know, most people would never drive six to eight hours or fly four or five hours. Like, it's not a normal thing. So if you have a body of water by you and you have big bluegills in it, take care of that body of water or you might end up losing the ability to catch those big bluegills. And, you know, most people live about 100 years. Uh, I mean, that's like the upper end of the spectrum of human life. Well, if you're... 15, 20, 25 years old, and you destroy your big bluegill colony, you got a long time to sit around and kind of regret not being able to catch them anymore or just not have as much fun. Uh, the big thing I want to get across to everybody is it's not a bad thing to eat fish. You can eat fish, you just have to understand that there's a median size. So the one there's the most of, and there's the upper size. The best thing to do for any body of water with big bluegills is let that upper size go and eat all the middle class. There's going to be more middle class range in the gill, gill world than you could ever, you just can't kill them all. It's not possible. A lot of people go fishing, not enough people would be able to keep that many of those guys, especially with the limits imposed. That's why there's laws and limits anyways. Okay, so... The, the few things that, like I said, I've gone over is one, the big, big bull male bluegills, this guy right here. So this is going to be your easiest thing. When they look like that, they got that breast and they have that huge hump head and they're real thick. Those tend to be the males. Um, the biggest thing I encourage everybody to do is just like me, I, I eat fish all the time, guys. Anybody that wants to try to complain like, oh, well, you're preaching. I eat fish all the time. That's a mounted walleye. That's a mounted perch. I've eaten, I don't know, I probably probably ate about two dozen, three dozen bluegills this summer or this open water season. And I like eating bluegills through the ice, so I'll be keeping some more through the ice. Um, but you'll never see me catch and keep the biggest bluegill I have. And that's kind of like, you know, I just was smart enough a long time ago to just stop doing that. And I still eat fish. <laughs> I'm always eating fish, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, but that's a simple one. I want everybody to just try to keep in mind. Like I said, there's laws and rules. As long as you stay in with those, I can't tell you to do anything different. But if you have a body of water, you enjoy catching big bluegills from for your own sake, not mine, cause I'm not fishing your body of water. You are, uh, for your own sake, you should probably take care of it. It's as simple as, well, I catch 10 inch bluegills out here all the time. Cool. Keep and eat all the nines you want. You'll never have You'll never run out of nines. You'll never do it. Uh, because if there's tens and there's a good number of tens, they are always going to be trying to get to that 10 inch size. So there'll always be a nine at some point. It's that simple. Okay, guys, uh, enough ranting, enough rambling. Today was just a simple one. It was one of those things where I came across my thought process reading a thing uh, about, you know, bluegills and people having a problem with me letting go of giants and stuff like that. There's reasons for everything I do. Um, I don't just do things for fun and I don't think I really don't do things just poke at people. Uh, as much as this is going to rile up every bunch, a bunch of people, I'm not doing it to anger anybody. I'm just trying to do it to help you guys out. There's a lot of information out there. It takes a lot of time reading it and going over it. And that's probably why a lot of people don't like to learn about this stuff because it takes a lot of your personal time uh, to advance your thought process around, you know, a single specific fish. And then obviously there's there's many, many, many different species of fish. It would take your lifetime, which is what I've been doing my whole lifetime. I've wanted to know everything there is to know about fishing and uh, freshwater fish so far. I do learn a lot about saltwater, but that's going to be a ways away. So long story short, hopefully you guys take care of the uh, bluegills this winter. And then any other time you see this video, I hope it helps some of you guys keep your big bluegills around. If you want to create giant bluegills, keep that middle class of bluegills. Uh, doesn't matter what size. So if your biggest bluegills in a lake are eight inches, keep every seven you want to keep legally and watch your lake get better and better over the years. Trust me, it, it really does work. Um, if you want to look into any studies, Minnesota has probably the most comprehensive list of things. So if you're looking up stuff, um, bigbluegill.com bigbluegill has a good amount of things. Um, I'm trying to think of, if you type in like big bluegill on, uh, Instagram or Twitter, um, though there's a lot of things with that on there, 
there's a lot of good information out there. All you got to do is look it up. Uh, Big Bluegill on Facebook also has a ton of good information on like studies and stuff like that. And then uh, who was the other one? Oh, Pond Boss Magazine. He's like the master of making giant bluegills or giant anything. So you really want to pay attention to stuff, look him up. But like I said, this was just an information video. I wanted to get it across to you guys before the end of the year. I hope it helps some of you guys uh, treat this resource with a little respect and actually understand like you can keep eating fish i'm not telling you that please put below i need at least two recipes and i'll you know all you guys can comment i need two good recipes this winter to try uh some big or some bluegill fillets on so give me two recipes i'll cook them and i'll do a catch and cook i might do it out on the lake or i might do it at home it just depends on the recipe so comment below let me know what you guys have for me and I'm always down to learn new stuff. I've been eating fish for a very long time. I learned how to cook at a very young age, and fishing has been right there with me. So, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's little informational video. Hopefully it teaches you guys a few things. Have a safe ice season. Obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, could you please just remember to 